Hello and welcome to the Underhive. We are back with patch 1.0.3. So uh, if you don't want to read it yourself, you can listen along and I'm going to cover it here. So uh, to begin with the overview, I'm not going to read all this paragraph here. Basically, they're giving us a title, The Stoic, for people that have w faced epic waiting times. Um, so everybody that's been playing the game will get that. I don't think that's such a big deal. Titles for me are there to show you've achieved something specific uh, that perhaps not every player has the opportunity to yet or perhaps just isn't trying to get yet because they want to focus other things. Uh, so that shows off that you've done that. This being generalized, everybody gets it. It kind of takes the shine off it being a title for me, to be honest. Uh, but they've also added the waiting emote for free. Um, so, you know, I mean, some people like the emotes. When you when you are waiting for somebody, at, um, say, an expedition entrance or what have you, yeah, I mean, people use the emotes. I don't personally, but it's, it's cool that they're giving that for free. Although, to be honest, I can't imagine... I'm not going to play the video there, but I can't imagine it's that animated a uh, an emote, given that it's for waiting. So, uh, server spotlight. While we want everybody to find their long-term home in a tournament as soon as possible, also, we want to ensure that the process is safe and ready for everyone to use. We've been hard at work on a feature and testing it for the past two weeks, but because this feature is brand new, we decided to take a safe incremental approach to rolling out all, uh, the transfer to all players. When all worlds are back online from the downtime, our plan is to monitor the framework we created without turning transfers on immediately. Once we've confirmed that the framework holds up at scale, we'll turn on character server transfers in the Utopia world first, in the AP Southeast region. And uh, we will then closely monitor the transfers in this world, and if anything goes out of the ordinary, uh, we'll, take, uh, we'll make manual interventions. If all goes well, we'll turn it on for the rest of the AP Southeast region and continue monitoring. If after eight hours the team hasn't discovered any issues, we'll fully deploy that to the other regions. Thank you to our AP Southeast players for helping us ensure this feature is ready for the worldwide rollout. And thank you to everybody for understanding and patience. Please stay tuned for more updates. Please review the video and FAQ before uh, below so you can understand how the transfer process will work, the limitations, how it impacts your character. Each player will receive one free character token. Um, so essentially you go into the store and you'll be able to spend the token doing that and confirm your transfer. Enjoy your new home in a tournament. How do I transfer my character? So you need to log into your character, which means you'll be waiting in any applicable queues. There will be a new tab in the game store to claim your character transfer token. You will need to leave your company. You will need to remove any trading post sell or buy orders. Your character must be located in a sanctuary, such as a settlement or outpost. What comes with me when I transfer? So these were some big questions that people had um, when the transfer was um, planned and, and suggested that it will be coming very soon. So you will keep all your character progression, level, weapon mastery titles, etc. You will keep everything in your inventory and storage. I assume that that means if it's stored in Brightwood, when you transfer, it will be stored in Brightwood. Although the issue is it might be with a different faction ownership. You might not be able to transfer from storage to storage where you could in your previous server, but you know it is what it is. At least you're keeping the stuff. You will keep all your currency. You will keep all your houses and housing decorations, and you will keep all crest progress. So that addresses like the main concerns I would have. Um, I'm not particularly looking to transfer, but if I was, they would be the main things I'd want to keep. What does not come with you? Your company membership needs to be terminated first. Fair enough, because your company might not exist on that server. Um, and also, you can't have somebody taking up a slot that now doesn't exist on the server. Uh, active trading post sell orders and buy orders must be removed. Well, they've covered that there. That's fine. Again, it's because they kind of exist outside of your inventory. Um, and presumably, that just means they would be lost if, if that wasn't the case. I don't know if that would cause an issue their end, but, you know, follow, follow the instruction. Hopefully, if you'd forgot to do one of those, they would be like, oh, yeah, you know, you can't transfer yet. You need to go to, uh, you know, Weaver's Fen and, and delete that buy order. Uh, your friends list uh, would be world specific, so that will not transfer either. Fair enough. Where can I move my character to? You can move your character to any region except those that are full, those that are under maintenance, and those that you already have a character in. Pretty, pretty straightforward there. 
will there be opportunities to transfer again if I choose the wrong world, the world my friends choose fills up, or I regret choosing the world I transferred to? Transferring again will be uh, will require an additional token, which they're going to sell to us at some point. Uh, our team will continue monitoring world populations, queue times, and will evaluate the need for additional wave uh, an additional wave of server transfer tokens to be given out for free. I don't think that'll happen personally, unless they unless they cock it up. I don't think they're going to be giving them away for free. I think they want you to make a mistake and then they can charge you for that. Um, you know, WoW had paid server transfers for a long time. I don't know if they still are, but uh, I don't play WoW. But I do know that one of my friends spent an awful lot of money, several hundreds, if not thousands of pounds, just transferring servers uh, over the course of like 10 years. So, uh, so yeah, I, I imagine they want that money. Uh, after we're sure players have had plenty of time to find the right server, we will later make the server transfer token available for purchase. We'll give you notice ahead of time when they are changing to a paid service. General. Implemented final pieces of server transfer framework. Okay. Uh, improvement to the world UI selection, uh, selection UI. Okay. Not needed to use that for a while. Uh, added clearer messages when a player is kicked due to going AFK or violating the EAC. Uh, added clearer messaging when stacked discounts are present, such as territory standing and faction discounts on property taxes. To be honest, I thought that was pretty clear anyway, but if, if other people are having issues, then fair enough. Um, adjusted the respawn timer on both Swain Ambrose and various other elite enemies throughout the world. I'd like it if they'd confirmed what they've adjusted, because I never noticed an issue with both Swain Ambrose, but um, that's because... Our, our region is cutlass um, and i think that is where boats if it is the the big dude i'm thinking of um, then i never had any other issues with that um, in the depths players must now be in the arena to damage thought i didn't realize you could damage him from outside the arena fair enough um i can't imagine what ability that that would be personally but okay um an error message now appears when players attempt to buy their own items at the trading post uh i didn't know that was a thing I don't buy or sell a lot at the trading post, to be honest. I probably should sell more than I do, but it is what it is. Uh, reverted a chest slash loot change from 1.0.2 that was causing too many refining reagents to roll from chest. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I was getting an awful lot of reagents. And you'd, you'd kind of get like 10 of each. And I did think that was quite a lot, but it was just, uh, you know, on the other hand, I was thinking, well... Maybe it's because I'm in the, you know, the end game Shattered Mountain area. Maybe they want you to have a lot. And it, although it did fill up like 600 units of my inventory pretty quickly, um, I wasn't against that because I do want to do all the crafting. So, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but I understand it. If it wasn't intended, it wasn't intended. Adjusted the volume on the Amazon game splash screen. Yeah, that, that is relatively loud compared to the, you know, the game settings that I've got. Uh, armor is limited to one skill perk per piece. Fine. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I wouldn't mind it if you could still have more than one, no. Like, I, I, again, like I don't think for like a legendary piece that's an issue, but okay. Uh, added general performance improvements for visual artifacts and graphical settings. I haven't noticed anything on high. Obviously, in low for the wars, it, it's it's worse. But you know, beyond the beyond the lagging and stuff in wars, which can be done deliberately by uh, overstacking certain particle effects, uh, then, you know, I, I don't think that's what they're addressing, but yeah, I haven't had any artifacting issues. Dies are now removed from items upon trade with a warning message present. Okay. Uh, the time to declare war timer now visually pauses to make it clear when an invasion is Im imminent, but not yet scheduled. Territory remains in conflict state after invasions and war can be declared. So that's good for the warring factions. It really isn't good for us marauders on our server now. Um, the the other factions, I, I can't say for a fact to using any sort of exploit, uh, but it does feel like that could be the case. And it is a bit of a shame that there is yet to be any sort of incentive for the for the, the lowest performing faction because we're losing players now because they just want to join the big boys. And, you know, it, it, unfortunately, it, it's just going to keep going that way unless they do something about it. Hopefully that's going to come soon. But yeah, this this helps the uh, winning faction, you know, the most dominant faction. It, it does not help the um, least dominant in any way. If anything, it punishes them. 
fixed issues with the tier four and five Azov staff, go close those high level portals. So this was a real big one. The end game keys for expeditions require you to close uh, close the breaches and the, the ones you want to do are the tier four and five uh, staff requirement breaches because you get the best loot out of those. And of course, there's a lot of people running Shattered Mountain from time to time. And so you can get good rewards out of that for vel relatively low risk. Uh, so it's good that they fixed that. Hopefully that is true because they did say last time the abandoning event notification would be fixed. And again, this is another bug fix on this list. So they didn't do everything they said they were going to do last time. Hopefully that first general bug fix is going to get done. So they've uh, they've also said they've got rid of the abandoning event notification. It's not the worst bug in the world, but it is annoying. Uh, fix the housing UI issue. The UI will now correctly show that the property taxes are subject to the full price of the home and not impacted by the first time home buyer discount. Fixed issues with early game spawning. The watchtower respawn point is replaced by a settlement after it has been discovered. Players no longer incorrectly respawn at the watchtower after selecting to respawn at the settlement. Never had that issue, but yeah, that sounds annoying. Uh, fixed various localization issues throughout the game. Okay, I'm, I'm glad it's been done. Um, there's a lot of Turkish players on our server. Obviously, I want them to be able to understand any of the text and speech uh, that they're dealing with. Um, I'm not sure if the voice acting that, that is... Uh, in the game to an extent has been amended, but uh, ultimately it, it doesn't seem uh, to be an issue for me anyway. The UK region is, uh, UK localization is fine. Uh, fixed an issue where not all of the items for town projects were consumed when completing the mission. I haven't seen that happen, but yeah, that's obviously a thing. You don't want to be giving away free XP and free um, area influence and stuff. Uh, sorry, not influence, um, area renown for free without taking the resources. Resolved login areas that prevent players from accessing their character. Well, that's quite important. Um, one, of, one of my friends had a big issue with that in beta, just couldn't get on the game. Not not for the sake of queues, like could log on, on off-peak times um, and still you know, couldn't actually get into the game. So I'm glad they're fixing that. Fixed an issue that caused arena keys to not drop as intended. Well, yep, that's important. The arenas are a pretty big deal. So um, again, for end game, so it's important that keys drop. Fixed an issue that caused runic bear armor to not appropriately be dyed during wars. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a visual bug, but not the worst thing. Fixed a pet placement issue. Pets placed in an otherwise empty house now remain in the home after the player logs out instead of returning to the player's inventory. Fair enough. Um, never had an issue with that. I placed my dog on a bed and he stayed there, so that's fine. Uh, AP Southeast Service will now display the correct time zone again. Fixed an issue that caused company invites to persist after declined accepted. That would probably be a bit annoying, but didn't happen to me. Ah, Raja. Yeah, this one was annoying. Fixed an issue that caused Raja spawns to stack forever. One big cat at a time, please. Yeah, so uh, when I turned up at that area, I didn't have a mission for it, and I, I still don't know whether you, you will get a mission for that, but as far as I'm aware, I've cleared out Evanscale, and I never actually had to fight Raja, but I did go through that area for a quest and noticed that there was like... 70 instances of a tiger just sort of all fractionally offset in the timing so it was like the layers all followed each other up and then down as he was breathing so yeah it was uh it was clearly a bad mistake there uh, our team was able to include a few other urgent fixes this week in this week's update the following issues have been fixed fixed an issue that caused holding and dragging now this is urgent this is mega urgent Fixed an issue that caused holding and dragging around the client uh, while in windowed mode to constantly re-trigger invincibility. So in case you're not aware, that is a massive abuse for wars. You can make yourself invincible. You can stand on the spot, make yourself invincible. And, you know, if, if 50 of you do that, or let's say 40, the other team can't, can't claim that point. They just simply can't. So you can, you can basically never lose a defense because you can just all just stand on the last point for half an hour and be invincible if you did that. Now, I'm sure nobody, no company is that orchestrated for 50 cheaters to all do that, I'm sure. Um, I imagine the majority of the player base just want to play the game legitimately, but there are people doing that. Um, I, you know, I certainly wouldn't suggest it's, you know, it's a harassable thing. Don't, don't have a go at anybody that does that. 
But the bottom line is, it's it's not fair play. I don't know why you would want to win like that. You know, I, I log in and play this game because I want the challenge. I want to overcome it. If the only way you can overcome the challenge is by cheating, then what's the point? You might as well just go outside and tell yourself you won. Because you didn't win it fairly, did you? So what's the point? But hey, you always have that in online games. It's one of the reasons I don't play Call of Duty or anything like that. They're fun games, but they're just rife with cheating. So there's just no point in my opinion. Um, hopefully that's going to uh, that's gonna limit that. But they need to do something about the lag as well. Because um, that's a big deal. Uh, fixed an issue that causes taxes not to go into the company's treasury. That's important. Um, although not probably not that important for my company because we only own one region now, but uh, it is what it is. Fixed an issue that caused the penalty length for suspensions and bans to say over a year. That, yeah, that wouldn't be fun. And fixed an issue with companies not receiving some territory taxes. I don't know if that's the same point as that, but seems to be. Uh, additionally, we discovered that our fix for the issue with titles and achievements not always updating correctly. Uh, we need some additional work. We've removed it from the list. We'll continue to work on a fix for that. Yeah, because that happens to me, like, all the time. Uh, when I log in, and sometimes when I teleport, it will just remind me of the last sort of five to eight titles. It's a bit annoying. Uh, speculative fixes. The fixes listed below are tentative fixes and uh, mitigations. Uh, our goal is to get these changes out and see if the issue persists so we can continue to work on them and address in future update if necessary. Uh, worked to fix an issue where wars and invasions kicked off earlier than scheduled. Uh, I haven't experienced that, but yeah, that's important. You need to be ready for it. Work, uh, worked to fix an issue where not all settlement stations upgrade as intended when time projects are completed. Yeah, again, that's quite important. People are spending money and working to, well, spending in-game coin and uh, time completing the quest to actually get that done. So a bit annoying if it's not. Uh, players should no longer become stuck when entering or exiting an instance. If a player reconnects and their character is dead, the respawn screen is open with respawn options available. Players who are currently stuck need to contact customer support to have their character unstuck. Well, that hasn't happened to me, but yeah, that sounds pretty horrendous. Um, so yeah, the, I mean, the instances are a pretty big part of the game, particularly at end game. Um, I'm, I'm kind of upset to see that they haven't said they're fixing some of the end game bosses that just basically don't spawn. Um, they may well spawn very infrequently, but people within our company have said, look, we've, we've waited there a long time and it's, it's not spawned. It's not within an hour. Um, it, it's certainly not in line with the rest of the bosses. And hey, maybe maybe they want it to be like, yeah, it spawns once a day. If you miss it, you're out. Um, but that seems kind of rough. Because um, on, on one hand, I get it. But if you were, you know, if it was sort of like, oh, it'll spawn once for your company, then it's down to your company to make sure like everybody gets a go at it that wants a go at it. But if it's, oh, it only spawns once per day in the world or perhaps even less than that, um, it, it just allows other players to grief you unnecessarily by always camping that boss and taking it as soon as it's up. Uh, because, of course, if they killed it last time and they know how long it takes, then they may have a better idea of when it will be back. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, as I say, I don't know if that's the case at the minute. I don't know if it just doesn't spawn at all. Uh, but I know Malevolence is one of them that's that's had an issue, at least on our server. So I don't know if that's worldwide or not, but I assume it is. So uh, I would have liked to see them fix that one. But perhaps we'll see that next week. Well, that's everything I needed to cover there. Uh, let me know what you think. I, I am happy with a lot of these changes. I hope they can do more to fix the bosses. And I hope they can do more to fix the war lag. Uh, that would be very important. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time in the Underhive.